No, 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 no. Ah. Oh, thank God. Ninja. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Baking or Cooking with Tarina. Today we are going to be making banana nut muffins. So starting off, I'm gonna list off some of the ingredients we're going to need today. You are going to need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We're going to need one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, just have a lot of different containers, um, three large bananas mashed, so as you can see, these bananas are very brown and very ready to be mashed. And then it says three fourths cup of white sugar. Now in the past when I've made this recipe, I chose to switch out half a cup for brown sugar and I use light brown because I don't want it too dark. And then I use a quarter cup of white sugar. Um, sometimes I even use less than that because I want it not too sweet. Plus the bananas being so ripe already take up much of the sweetness. And then you're going to need one egg, as so we have here, and one third cup of butter melted. So I have my one third cup cut already and I'm going to microwave it when I need it. And then optional, you can add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a dash of nutmeg, which my nutmeg is here, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Now that is just for plain, plain banana muffins. If you wanted to get creative with it, I have some additional mix-ins slash toppings that I used to, that I pretty much like to add in mine. So I have um, Lily's dark chocolate baking chips as well as the Nestle Toll House semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I like to mix some of those in. And then I have the Heath Bar English toffee pieces. So that just adds a little crunch, a little surprise. And then also to add texture, I have chopped pecans or pecans to put inside. Um, and then also, we also sometimes add walnuts as well. So those are all of your ingredients in terms of materials and tools that you need to use. We have our mixing bowls. We have our muffin tins. Now I have one hard metal muffin tin. And then I have two of these reusable foil ones. Either one works. Um, we, instead of spraying oil on them, we are just going to be using these uh, disposable muffin or cupcake trays. Um, I have them in several different colors, so it actually helps when you have different people who have different needs. You know, my brother really likes uh, no chocolate chips, but he wants toffee, he wants nuts, but I like it with chocolate chips and toffee and nuts, and then my mom and grandma just want the nuts. So it's a good way to differentiate which muffins which once they come out, because it's gonna be hard to tell which one's which. All right, so Starting off, you need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then uh, sift together your flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt, and you're gonna set that aside. So I will be using a small conventional oven that's just sitting on our counter. We have a large one and we haven't used it in years, so um, it does take me a little bit more time to put in and pull out the different size muffin tins because not all of it fits in at once. But for now, I have that small oven out and ready for 350 degrees, and I'm gonna get started with the baking flour, uh, or the, the all-purpose flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. To start off, we're gonna go with that one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Make sure you have a nice flat surface, like a knife, to properly level off that amount. With baking, it's important to use exact amounts, so use a level or a knife to make sure the amount is correct. Next off, we're going to go for that one teaspoon of baking soda, and then do the same thing as you did with the flour, level it off, put it in. Next, we're gonna go for that baking powder, do the same thing as you did with your baking soda. It is also one teaspoon. Level it off and place it in. Moving on, we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. Same idea, level it off with a knife and place it in. 
You're going to take a fork and move it and mix it around. I don't have a sifter. The, the recipe does say to sift it. I just mix it around to the best of my ability and made sure that it was well incorporated. Now it's time to peel our three overly ripe bananas. Now I'm sure you all know how to peel a banana and put it in pieces into the bowl, so let's just speed up this next part. Then you can either take a potato masher or a fork and just smash it into as mushy bits as you possibly can. I'm also going to speed up this next part because you don't need to see me mashing bananas. There you have it, mashed up bananas. Next up, we're gonna go for our sugar. So as I stated before, you can do 3 fourths cup of white sugar, but just for the moistness that comes with brown sugar and the color and the flavor, I'm doing, oh no, watch out. See that egg? Ah! Safe, ooh, ninja. All right, so as I was saying, we're doing one half cup of light brown sugar. Make sure you level it off, dump that in. We're gonna go in for our white sugar now. We're doing quarter cup. Sometimes, like I said, I like to do less than that, so I'm not even gonna level it. Just see it's a little less than one fourth cup. Put that in. Next up, we have the egg that almost died, and we're placing that in now. Moving on, we are taking that one third cup of butter and placing it in the microwave until it's melted, roughly about 30 seconds. At this time, get yourself a silicone spatula for mixing. Once your butter is fully melted, you're going to pour it into the bowl. Now, I didn't completely melt it as I should have, so there might be a little bit of chunks. You want to make sure that you mix that thoroughly. Um, sometimes the chunks of butter can look like bananas, so it's better that you do fully melt it because otherwise you're going to have pockets of butter in your muffins. And believe me, those are not pockets of sunshine. They are really rich pockets of butter. Now that's about how your mixture should look like when you're done. Now we're going to take that flour mixture we had and put about half of it in and start mixing it until we see that the pockets of flour are completely mixed in. And then you're going to proceed to add the second half. It's very important that you mix extremely thoroughly. You don't want to have any pockets of flour in your batter. As you can see, I'm pressing into it just to make sure that I don't have any pockets of flour. At this point, I realized I forgot to add in the vanilla extract as well as the cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, you're supposed to add it in probably around the time that you're doing sugar and eggs. It's fortunate that at this point it's not too late for me to add it, so you are doing a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and a dash of nutmeg. All you really need is a little shake from the jar. Um, just try to add it in earlier if you can. Fortunately, I remembered in time. Just remember to mix it thoroughly. Once your batter looks like this and nice and thick, it's time to put it into the muffin container. And I like to use a little soup spoon to scoop little bits in. You're gonna fill those tins about one third of the way. You're going to fill those up and afterwards, make sure you use that spoon to evenly distribute it around the bottom so that once you add your toppings, those toppings aren't hitting the bottom and that as much of the batter that can cover your toppings or your mix-ins can be properly covered so your chocolate chips may not be melting on the edges of your muffin. Time to add in the mix-ins. So at this point, having different colored cupcake liners comes in handy so you know exactly what to put in what areas. So with the different flavors, you want to make sure that anyone has any allergies or any specific tastes, you can evenly distribute it correctly. Mm -hmm. 
Now we are adding the top of the muffin. Now it's very, very important that you do not fill up your muffin tin 100%. You wanna keep it about two thirds or halfway full. These muffins will rise in the oven and if you do fill them up 100% before placing them in the oven, they will overflow and you will not get that pretty dome shape of your muffin. So this is what your muffins should look like before they go into the oven. See that they are about two thirds full. Hi guys, so as you see, we have finished uh, putting our banana muffin batter into the container. Now our oven is hot and ready at 350 degrees. We're gonna place it inside. Now the recipe says it's 10 to 15 minutes for mini muffins. These are regular sized muffins, if not slightly in the medium side. The larger muffins are supposed to be 25 to 30 minutes. We're gonna put them in for 20 minutes at the medium, median of those two numbers. See how it looks and then I'll show you guys how I check to see if it's ready. So it's been about 15 of the 20 minutes and it's been a hot second since I've made these, but they do look almost ready. So I'm going to pull them out and just test to see if they're ready. One thing you should know about me, I'm very scared of getting burnt. That's why I didn't start cooking or baking until very later in life. But, okay, they look pretty, you know, brown and crispy. Now one way to test if they're ready, you're gonna take a skewer or a toothpick. You're going to stab it into your muffin and see how it comes out completely clean. There's not any gooey bits stuck to it. See, it? now that's, I hit chocolate on that one, but that's hard to guess. Oh, uh, let me see. So that one is still a little gooey. See how you can see that there's little granules on it? So we're gonna let it cook just a little bit longer. The amount of time I've taken away from it just doing this should be enough. It's probably about two to three minutes left and that should be perfect. Once that's done, we're gonna test it again. We're gonna pull them out and we're gonna put them on a cooling rack. Um, kind of in the same idea as cookies, we want to have it cool down on a cooling rack and let it like kind of still cook a little bit more with that residual heat. Now for a cooling rack today, I will be using this kind of portable grill sheet thingy. Um, I'm kind of cheap and didn't want to pay full price for a cooling rack, so I just got this little stand. Works the same way. Once they're done, I'm going to place it on here for them to cool. So one of the disadvantages of having a small portable oven like this, it doesn't cook quite evenly. So as you saw me flip it, um, I noticed that the back side of the oven was cooking a little bit quicker and it was getting a little brown. So I wanted to get ahead of it. And for those last couple minutes, it could cook more evenly on the side that's not as dark as the side that's already been darkened. <laughs> All right, so time to take them out. There we go. As you can see, they rose beautifully. A little bit browner on this side, but they look good regardless. Now I'm going to put these aside really quick. I've set it for just under 20 minutes because I feel like 20 minutes might be a little much. I'm still gonna flip it around halfway through. And right now let's move those first batch onto the cooling rack. Well, we should probably check if they're ready first. Let's see, we have our little stick. Comes out nice and clean. Everything seems to be fully baked. And we're all set. All right, let's move them. A quick tip to make your 
entire baking experience a little more seamless. A lot of people hate the cleanup part. Now during these 15-20 minutes, especially if you have to do it in two batches, that is the perfect time to do your cleanup because you're just waiting for stuff to cook. And what's that saying? A watch pot, what, what, <laughs> oh my gosh. A watched pot never boils. So the time for this to bake is gonna go by so much quicker if you just start doing the dishes, start doing your things a little bit earlier, and that way you'll have all of your dishes done. You don't have to worry about any cleanup, and then your muffins are ready. As you can see, I've changed out of my clothes because I got to go to work, you know, hustling two jobs plus doing YouTube videos. But I've packed up some of these banana bread muffins to go and share with my coworkers. And as you saw in the clip just before, grandma really likes them. Um, I have some for my grandma and my mom too. And then I'm also bringing uh, two little ones for my aunt. Um, I'm sure she will be remaking this recipe because every time I've made it, she's been over head over heels for it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like what you saw. Also comment down below if you have any questions for me or any videos you'd like to see me make in the future. Thank you so much for watching.